Good morning, everybody. And um, I've been neglecting to say it, but happy Easter. The main reason why I've been forgetting to say it is because where we are, it isn't even apparent or evident. But um, happy Easter, everybody. It's um, now Easter Monday where I am, um, except it's just an ordinary Monday. So as again, we haven't even noticed that it's Easter. Um, so apologies, I probably should have said that to everybody who's been coming along for the last couple of days on all my tours. Happy Easter. Um, hi, Catherine. Great to see you again. And um, for the others who've joined, please um, give me a wave, say hi. We're back for part two of Butterflies. Uh, what did we do yesterday? What did we do yesterday? <laughs> I don't think we did very much. Um, we, after breakfast, we uh, headed across to the beach. Yeah, that's right. We headed across to the beach. And uh, it's a lovely beach here. It's not a waves beach. We're protected by the um, islands off the coast. So, And there's a reef as well. So it's actually just a, a calm water shore. But it's very pleasant over there. And um, I'm planning to do a sunrise tour so I can take you to the beach and show you um, what the beach looks like and we can actually see some of the um, the area around here. There's a, there's a little tiny little temple over there. There's um, some evidence of former storm damage a little bit further up so we're actually quite lucky in where we're located. All right, so um, and anyone who's watching this later, please um, welcome. Thank you for coming along. It's just coming up to quarter to six in the morning and there's a half moon above me. I don't know if you're actually going to see that. Probably not. Oh, no, there it is. There's a half moon in the sky just up there. Looking lovely. Hi, Tariq. Hi, Judy. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so it's 5.45 and what's happening today? We're heading back to the butterfly farm for part two. And it's going to kick off with the release of the, the, the new emerging, newly emerged butterflies that have just come out of their chrysalises. I've been calling them cocoons, but they're correctly known as chrysalises. Good morning, Tish, and good morning, Lynn. Hi, thanks for coming along. Oh, there's a mozzie in front of my face. Oh, but I have to tell you, <laughs> since yesterday, I don't know, is this coincidence or what? Um, I got up this morning and it was dark in the room when I got up, but there was a little bit of um, light coming through under the doorway and I could see a shape and it was moving. And I thought, oh, yeah, it's probably just a gecko. Um, you, get them, you get them on the walls at night here and barking away, making little noises. Um, but I've turned on the flashlight on my camera and pointed it at it. It was a frog. It was a frog in our room this morning. <laughs> so here I am madly trying to catch it. I caught it. I've, I've never caught a frog before. I caught it in my hands with my phone in my hand. I'm sort of holding it like this, waking Richard up saying, quick, quick, get the dog, get the dog. <laughs> but I managed to get it outside. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so so that was my nature encounter this morning. A little frog. It was about probably about that big in our room this morning. I managed to um, li liberate him outside the balcony door, um, and where we were moved yesterday to uh, um, a riverfront riverfront room. So he's happy over there on the grass, heading towards the river. Hi, Laurie. You made it. Hi, Tish. I already said hi, Tish. All right. So let's get started. We're about to see the. Um, the release of the newly emerged butterflies after they've emerged from their chrysalises. And again, it's another activity and it's presented by one of the uh, the lovely attendants, um, lovely staff of Entopia. Let's go, let's get started. Good morning, everybody. You guys can come a little bit closer. All right. How are you guys feeling today? Good. All right. That's great. Here. Now, let me introduce myself. My name is Sydney and I'll be the host for this activity, which is called Vita Nova. So first and foremost, can anybody tell me what does Vita Nova means? New life. New, New life. Good job. Everyone give him a round of applause. Yes, Vita Noah means new life and this activity is called Vita Noah 
because we've been releasing newly emerged butterflies. So all these butterflies right here, they have just emerged either this morning or last night from the pupa and they've never flown before. So you guys will be having the privilege of letting them have their very first flight in the garden today. Alright? Now, before we release them, allow me to share some fun facts about these butterflies to you. Now, first of all, can anybody tell me how many stages are they in the butterfly's life cycle? Good morning. Any guesses? What about you? Four. Alright, good guess. Anybody else? I have a four over here. No, not Do I say a five? Four and five. Alright, let me just tell you the answer. Four is the correct answer. Yes, there are four stages in the butterfly's life cycle, starting with the eggs. And tiny little caterpillars will emerge from these eggs and some, for some caterpillars, their very first meal is actually their own eggshell. So they'll eat their own eggshell before feeding on the leaves they are laid on. They'll eat and eat and eat and then they'll grow bigger and bigger before they turn into a pupa. Yeah. So inside the pupa, is where the magic happens. The caterpillar will digest itself into a caterpillar juice. And inside the juice is where the caterpillar slowly rebuilds itself into a beautiful butterfly, which is what we have here today. Now, there's also another reason why it's a magical process, because even though the caterpillar is turned into a juice, when it emerges a butterfly, it can still remember its past life as a caterpillar. So the, cat, the butterfly will know what kind of leaves that the, but, that the caterpillar had eaten and then the butterfly will know where to lay its eggs. Alright? Now, let me ask you guys another question. How many legs does a butterfly have? Six? I have six. Four? I have a four and a six. Any other answers? Four? Six? Do I hear an eight? Alright. So actually, both answers are correct. Four legs and six legs are both the correct answers, so give yourself a round of applause. Good job. Now, let me explain to you why both the answers are correct. So, yes, six legs is correct because butterfly is an insect and an insect has six legs. But why do I say four legs is correct? Because later, when you take a closer look at some of the butterflies, you may only see four legs. This is because the other two legs are actually folded underneath their bodies and they act as a wiper for their eyes because when they're flying through the garden, dust, water or pollen may collect on their eyes so they'll need the other two legs to wipe their eyes and the other four legs to walk. This is what we call a brush-footed butterfly. Alright, now before we release the butterfly, so everyone can see, I have two special big butterflies over here. These two are called the three leaf butterflies or the paper kites. This is a species of poisonous butterflies that we have in the garden. So nothing is going to happen to you if you handle a poisonous butterfly as long as you don't eat the butterfly. Alright? Now, since there's many of you over here but only two of these special butterflies, so I'm going to ask you guys some questions. I'm going to count to three and you guys will raise your hands to answer the questions. Alright, is that fair? Alright, now the first question is, we all know that the national butterfly, uh, national flower of Malaysia is hibiscus. So can anybody tell me the full name of Malaysia's national butterfly? In three, two and one, raise up your hands. Yes sir? Raja Brook, can I have the full name? There's another word behind Raja Brook, you are very close. You can search online, I'll act like I didn't see it. It's okay, you can search online. Anybody else? We already have the front two words. So there's Raja Brook. Yes? Raja Brook's book ring, yes. Good job. Alright, sure, thank you very much. So this one right here is for you. Because she said to pass it to you. Now, one last question for you guys. This one, I mentioned it right before I started my presentation. What is my name? In one, two and three. Raise up your hands. Yes? Sydney? Sydney, yes, you are correct. There you go. 
Alright, now don't worry everybody else. If you didn't get the big one, it's alright. I have many pretty smaller ones over here. Now, before we release the butterflies together, I'm going to have a, full, a few ground rules for you guys. So I'm going to need you to pay a little bit closer attention to me. Alright, now, first of all, you are only allowed to release the butterflies here at the main entrance area. You are not allowed to bring the butterfly anywhere around the garden or out of Anthropia. Because some species over here, they are protected species, which means you need a license to keep them. If you bring it out without a license and authority finds you, you may go to jail. And also, as I've mentioned just now, some of the species here are poisonous. So please don't go around the garden, pluck the butterflies and put it in your mouth, alright? If you're hungry, we have a human restaurant over there, okay? Now, the second rule is when you get the butterfly container, don't open it yet because we release the butterflies together, alright? Now, once you open the container, you may notice that some of the butterflies may not fly away because they are not ready. So what you can do is put one finger in front of the butterfly's face and let the butterfly slowly crawl onto your finger. Then you can take a very nice picture with the butterfly before releasing it into the garden. If the butterfly doesn't fly away, then you are very lucky because you can walk around with the butterfly on your finger. Or if you don't want it, then you can place the butterfly onto a nearby plant. Alright? And the third rule is, once you are done with the containers, you can pass it back to me right here. Alright? Now, are you guys ready? Yes, yeah. yeah, alright, that's good. Now, I'm just going to need everyone to stay at your places. For those that are up there, you can come down here so I can pass the butterflies to you guys, alright? Alright, now that everybody has a butterfly in their hands, I'm gonna let I'm gonna tell everyone a little legend about those insects in your hand right now. So legend has it that butterflies are messengers to the ones up above. So in exchange for their freedom, you may whisper your wish to the butterfly and they will bring your wish to the heavens and they may grant it. So now you have a few seconds to whisper your wish to the butterfly. I have no idea what to wish for. So let's just let the butterfly decide. Alright, are you guys ready? We are going to count down together, okay? From 3, 2 and 1, release! Hey, congratulations everybody, you have just witnessed the butterfly's very first flight. Once you're done with the containers, you can pass it back to me over here. Thank you once again for being a part of this special activity and I hope you enjoy Antopia.
So the cocoon, the word cocoon, we actually use it for the moth, but this is what we call the chrysalis casing. Yep. Chrysalis is what we call it for the butterfly. So right. yes, that's the casing. That's, that's the casing. Yes. So they kept, each individual yes. um, Every day is, is kept in, in an individual. Yes. Ah. So for example, this one right here. Yeah. And then you can also have the three nymphs. Uh, right. So the three nymphs before they emerge, they are actually golden in colour. Right. So that you can see later in our indoor exhibit. What about is that? Oh, that would be the cocoon. You can go straight from here and then you see the sign saying the cocoon. But you can finish exploring the outdoor, then you can go into the indoor. Excellent. Yeah, I was wondering about where that was. Thank you so much. Thank you. An egg fly? Yes, an egg fly. Okay. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yes. And this is the one that's got blue on the inside. Yes. yes, look at it. It's that's so gorgeous. Main. Beautiful. Let's see if we can get this open one handed. <laughs> All right. So the egg flies, they are quite a fast flyer. They are very erratic. So... I've noticed it's walking around already. <laughs> hard, to, hard to get one in on, on the photograph. All right, little butterfly, you ready? There you are, you. Oh. Beautiful, look at that. I don't have a spare finger. You can just place the Oh, there he goes. So maybe you can try and get more footage over there at the waterfall where we have the rose. Yeah, I saw the hibiscus there, they're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so now that we've seen all the activities, I'll take a little walk through um, the, the, we're following the path and we'll follow it as, in, as it's intended. So back through here, where well, we already had a guided uh, tour with uh, Soraya. And now we come to the Tiger Falls. And every now and again, just a butterfly appears above my head, just slightly out of view. Let's see if we can get that rainbow effect. Uh, I can't, I can't reproduce it with the butterfly. So as we walk along this path here, we'll keep on the lookout again once more for of course butterflies but as well as that we've got the pitcher plants and the beautiful bat orchid and this must be where the fish get fed Here we go, so there's the water dragon down there on the log. It's right under the lamp, on the log, right underneath the lamp. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, great. Oh, there he is. Look at that. He's posing for us. Right. There you are. You're just a big poser, aren't you? And here we have this bat orchid again. What a stunning flower. That's just gorgeous, isn't it? And then here we have the pitcher plant. And I sing, oh, every time I spot one, it lands for just a moment. But they're on the ground here. They must be getting the water off the ground. Let's go around here. Oh, look, here we go. Look at these ones on the pineapple. It's a little white and orange one that never stays still. It's just just landed on the ground there. Let me see. No, it's such a tease. So we emerge from underneath the rock and come to this is really interesting. This display is about uh, the black soldier fly and the way that it's being used to um, produce protein. So you see all these little black dots here. It's the black soldier fly. And this is all about how it's turning um, waste food into organic material, um, which is used to feed animals. So we can go in there and have a look. I'm not sure how much we'll see, because they're not huge, they're quite big, and that was a big step that I just almost fell down. But, this one landed on me. So that's the black soldier fly there. And apparently it um, eats, eats um, waste product. Oh, here we go. There's tons of them on this leaf. I know this would be irksome and distressing to some people, but once you know how beneficial they are, it becomes a completely different story. I'm just being careful not to tread on them. So we'll find out more about that when we get to uh, this education space just over here. So it says the black soldier fly frass is an organic fertilizer that can induce changes in the microbial community of the soil. And it's a sustainable protein source of animal feed. Um, can be used to make renewable biodiesel, feed to poultry and pets.
So that's the, the product that um, that comes from the black soldier fly waste. And apparently there are moving critters up here. Oh yeah. in here again once more. Let's see if we can get some good shots. They just don't stay still. So this is the leopard lacewing butterfly, this one here. Let's see if we can find one of those. The caterpillars are pretty funky looking, aren't they? There's one right in front of me. And when we came in here earlier, there were some steps that you climb up and look underneath where the water dragon is but we didn't see it and since we've seen it from above we know that it's not in the water <laughs> so we won't we won't uh, we'll skip that this time round but that's where you can climb up and look underneath the water Almost landed on me. Almost landed on my head. I think it's attracted to my red pants.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing to do there, buddy. Sorry. Two dancing butterflies, oh. dancing together. And this one on the leaf, right in front of me. That's delightful. Oh, absolutely delightful. What's that one? That one's really pale, sort of almost a dead leaf colour. So then as we come back down here, past the first waterfall, Sorry, we'll head towards the second waterfall. Can you still hear me? I had to return to my room because the um, the battery died on the computer, which I don't understand because I had it um, had it charging last night. 
And um, so then the signal was poor when I got back to the room and uh, it all dropped out. Let's see if I can get back the... Um, Let's see if I can get the recording back for you. I'm so sorry about that. Won't be a second. I'll just get this back on. Let's uh, bring that back up again. And I'll probably have to um, quickly fast forward now um, to the point where we, um, to the point where it cut out. So let's get that up there. Sorry about that, guys. I just, um, nothing up. Let's just get through to about where would we have been? Let's try. No, it could be further than that. Okay, here we go. This is where we That's were. A big ugly thing, isn't it? <laughs> so sorry about that, guys. So uh, we'll continue from here, and let's hope the signal holds in the room because um, and, and I'll shoot Richard, <laughs> shoot Richard out. <laughs> so. The reason I don't do it in the room is just because, you know, to give Richard space. I, I don't want to um, do him out at 6 o'clock in the morning. Look at this flower. Wow, that's amazing. I might actually finally get this orange and white one. I swear it knows. How gorgeous. I spotted one with green on the wings.
All right. Yeah, so they appear to be drinking the water off the ground. All right, so one last stop on our way out, and that is, I believe, where we see the... Oh, iguanas. Oh, iguanas. He's a big one. The name is Barry. Mary. Barry. Barry. Hello there. Wow. And where are they from? They're not from here. The South America? Yes. South America? Yes, yes, yes. South America. We have a pair actually. The male is resting at the moment. Once it's healed, we bring him down. Oh, okay. What's he resting from? The tail got some infection. Oh. Oh, okay. Alright, you don't look real hungry at the moment. So it's like a bead underneath here, is it? Yeah. It's a flap of skin underneath the chin. Yeah. They want to help them to regulate their temperature. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, look. Hey. Hello. Okay. And now we're going to head towards the cocoon space, which I believe is on the way out. Go. All right, so there's a whole lot of stuff upstairs there. Pandora Forest, Metamorphosis, Cinerama, Breeding Grounds, Lumino City. Gosh, I've only seen half this space, have I? This way. Right, so we go up here. macro photos of well they look like crickets to me this is a snake is it is a snake I'm not sure what that is it's hard to tell when you're that close to them right so the first space we go into is Pandora Forest
Welcome to the Bandura Forest. You will discover and experience the myths and legends of butterflies from different cultures. Let your imagination run wild in this magical fantasy world. Enjoy! Once there was a man named Takahama who was engaged to a woman named Akiko. Akiko died on the night before their wedding. Takahama vowed never to marry him. For many years, Takahama would sweep a graveyard clean and set flowers at her tombstone, praying. Eventually, he grew old and ill. The soul of Akiko came to him as a large white butterfly and never left his side until he passed away. Zuli Yunkai was a beautiful woman who fell in love with a scholar, Liao Shangbo. However, the old man said Zhu's parents had arranged for her to marry a rich merchant. Heartbroken, Liao became ill and died. On the day of the marriage, Zhu went to Liang's grave and begged it to open up. When it did, she threw herself into the hole to forever be with Liang. Their spirits emerged from the grave as a pair of butterflies, never to be separated again. Many species where the eggs will hibernate over winter, 
and in these cases, the incubation period can last for several months. When it is time for the caterpillar to hatch, it will chew through my shell. Most caterpillars will eat the whole shell, and this will be its first meal. After the shell, the caterpillar will start feasting on the leaf it was laid on. This is where my story ends, and the caterpillar's begins. This is a great education space for kids and uh, gives them a, a brilliant opportunity to learn more about the, uh, the four stages, life stages of the caterpillar. Um, but we'll keep moving. All right. So yes, yeah, very much uh, set up for as a great education space. You could spend hours in here. All right, here we go. Look at this. So we've got displays of several of the species that we've already seen. Some that we couldn't catch because they just wouldn't stay still. Trying to get it without that reflection, the light reflection, which is tricky, a little bit difficult. I'll try this way. Yeah, really hard, really hard to do. Let's see what's on this side. That's um, that's a. Is that real? No, they're stickers. Those ones. This is one of the ones that wouldn't stay still for me. Is that the um, monarch? Probably the only butterfly I know. <laughs> These ones are beautiful. As are these. I'm pretty sure I saw this one inside as well, but its wings were closed, so it was hard to tell. Oh, look at this. Back over here. These are the ones that we saw lots of. We saw lots of that one. This one is huge. No names on any of them. And here we have a giant caterpillar. I'm hoping we'll actually get to see some caterpillars somewhere in here. To keep an eye out, look very closely. Oh, I see some in there. There's some, look. Some in there. Hello, this is the 
Hard to see in here. That one there is up on the ceiling. Okay, there's one there. Inside the injuries, the butterflies feed on nectar plants, such as the coral vine and Zygona leptopus. Alright. The males find the females by sight the furrows. Here we have some chrysalises. All different shapes and colours and sizes. Butterflies lay their eggs on food plants that caterpillars will eat when they hatch. For instance, this tree nut butterfly. What's the colour of this one here? Lays its eggs on the food plant, Persona species. Butterflies stick their eggs onto the plants using a special glue. The eggs are like tiny beads that come in different shapes and sizes. Oh, there's some butterflies emerging here, look. Tiny caterpillars hatch from the eggs after a few days. They are then transferred to the cages where they will be raised. The food plants are replenished regularly. The caterpillars eat heavily and grow rapidly by shedding their skin a few times. They transform into pupae. The pupae are collected when they are fully formed. They are then attached to steel frames. These pupae are left hanging in another cage where they slowly transform into butterflies. Meanwhile, some pupae are harvested and sorted according to species for export. So yes, there's a running video going on in the background there. Then, they're carefully arranged and packed into parcels. And there's a map talking about um, export, pupa export. Butterfly exhibitions and insectariums are now a global eco-phenomenon in the leisure and recreation industry. Okay, so I guess this um, provides a an incredible business opportunity for this um, organisation. Here we have some moths. I'm not sure about the colour coding of the continents. I don't think all our butterflies are blue <laughs> in Australia. I'm pretty sure they're not. But uh, these are amazing. Look at the, the variety, the incredible colour. of these um, beetles.
my battery's running low so I'm just being very I'm going to scoot through here but look at the color of these beetles here they're amazing got Malaysia Thailand Look at this thing. Look at that thing. Wow, look at that. Look at these. Incredible. And look at the cicadas. That's one huge cicada. And then these things, these are like um, stick insects. and I think we're just about done uh, there's a whole other wall of insects over that side as well but I'm really conscious about my battery um, being very low at the moment let's just have a quick look look at these my god these are incredible the color of these beetles amazing okay I'm going to finish up there To, <clears throat> I think this is a butterfly wing under a microscope. Yeah, that's it. So that's what the butterfly wing looks like when seen under a microscope. Astounding, absolutely astounding. Okay, back down here. There's still more down there, but I want to turn it off now and check the state of my battery. Heading down to the ground level, I think there's one more exhibit down the bottom, but I want to check on the state of my battery first. So if it's very low, I might might give that one a miss. Okay, so all sorts of little activities here for kids. It's really well done. Lots of things for them to do. But what's in here, I hear, hear noises. We've got real life insects in here, I think. Katie did. Here, look. And it appears that Katie did like cucumber. Giant long legged Katie did. You can see the belly of the one on the left moving. That one up there in the uh, branch, moving. They're big. What else have we got in here? Fascinating insects. Okay, so this one's called a man-faced bug. Oh, I see. All right, so we're looking at it. Right, yeah, okay. 
Let me see if I can get a good shot at it. So this would be, I need to get it in focus first. Yeah, look at that. That's definitely a man face. How interesting. And there's little red and black ones in there too. There's something different. Bugs and beetles. I'm trying to see the man face. There's none that are really in a good position. There's one that one there, but it's not great. You can kind of see it. It says you can enter in here. I'm not sure what this is. Welcome to Sticky Stop. Oh, stick insects. Oh, let's go have a look at the stick insects. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, that is a big one. That's a big one. Look at the size of it. And there's another one up there. Oh, they're now. They're, they're, you can see them now. There's two there. A green one and a brown one. And there's a long thin sticky set. And there's two here. And there's that one out there on the end of that branch. Yeah, shame about the position of the light. Big stick insects. Okay, cool. I don't expect you're allowed to touch them. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Or maybe you might. Be. Okay. So, several big stick insects there. And now we're, we've reached the exit and the gift shop. There's some cool butterfly themed bags here, look. That's nice. That's um, about $13. Little uh, ornaments with the, is that the man face bug? And if you wanted to purchase a, your own butterfly, you're looking at around about, well, different prices. That's 238, this one's 380. Big difference in price. So that one's around about $130. Beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous. Oh, look at this. So if you want one of those, one of those, 688, what's that? That's about 230, 230 Australian dollars roughly. All right, well, this is the cafeteria. So what do we have? Waffles. Waffle with peanut butter, eight ringgit. Mm. Okay. All right, so that was it. How did you like part two? It was um, more about insects and that other space, the cocoon space, um, which was really interesting, but there was a lot, lot more to it. And, um, and a lot of the over-talking um, from the different sections, no butterfly case. <laughs> yes.
Um, maybe that was in the dessert section. I didn't look at the entire menu, Gregory. Um, yes, yeah, so that cocoon space had lots of sort of competing um, commentary going on, which made it a little bit tricky. Um, but I found it interesting. It, it, and nonetheless, um, it was a fascinating space and great for kids, really educational, um, a fantastic. I, I spent three hours there. Um, found it really intriguing. All right, so um, so that was our, that's the end of our butterflies. Um, I'm going to be uh, what is it tomorrow? We're going on an outing. Uh, one of Hoy's um, guides. We're going out to an ancient ruins site, uh, which should be really interesting. I just noticed my um, signal seems to be dipping a little, so I'll finish this up quickly. And that should be amazing. I'm starting really really early tomorrow morning. We'll be we'll be leaving at 5 20 in the morning so um big early start for us tomorrow and um wednesday we're going up to Danang with hoi and uh we might get something interesting come out of that so i'll leave that as um um we'll, we'll leave that wait and see see what happens on wednesday uh wednesday morning though i'll bring you the uh tour from penang botanical gardens um, which is pretty cool so before we head out for the day on Wednesday, I'll bring you that. And I'm working on the Bashir Ks right now. So um, hope to have that to you by the end of the week. And I hope to schedule a sunrise to a live. I'm going to try and do a live. Um, but again, I'm sort of a bit gun shy with all these signal issues that I'm having at the moment. Um, and still trying to work up the courage to do another live. But we'll, we'll do it. We'll get there. All right, everyone, thanks again so much. If anyone's watching this later and you're not already subscribed, please do so. Um, it helps me a lot. Uh, we are still trying to build up this channel. Uh, there's more features that I have access to once I reach that magic 500 number. I need to look them up again. It's been so long since I last checked to see exactly what that allows me to do. Um, and please share postcards. Love to see them. Um, and it also helps uh, create awareness. Uh, for our community. All right. See you again soon, everybody. Thanks again. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.